Welcome and thanks for watching this video. In this video, I would like to talk about measurement challenges related to collecting data on persons with disabilities. And I would also like to give you an overview of the available data. In the past, data collection efforts on disability had very different definitions of the disabled population. Also, different methods and approaches to data collection were used. So all countries in the world, at some point in time, have collected data on persons with disabilities. And these go back to the 19th century. What has changed over time is the understanding of disability. In the past, disability was defined through a charitable model. People with disabilities were seen as people that deserve pity. They were suffering for their conditions and it was the responsibility of the society to help these people through charity. After the Second World War, the concept of disability has changed. The focus has been on identifying the medical conditions and the impairments affecting persons with disabilities. This was the model of disability that was called the medical model. People with disability were those on a wheelchair those for which a diagnosis was provided. The focus of the data collection efforts of the past was very much about identifying the causes of the conditions. Questions were developed and drafted to ask people if they were missing a leg or an arm, for instance, if they were mentally retarded. So the focus of the data collection was to identify what is wrong with an individual. Why? Because the purpose was really about identifying a society burden, the cost of having disabled people in a society. So data collection efforts had this specific objective in mind and a very narrow way of defining persons with disabilities. In more recent years, the concept of disability has changed we now have a psychosocial model of disability that doesn't put the emphasis on individual conditions, but rather on the society. Persons with disability are those who have an impairment, but it's only the interaction between the impairment and the society that makes people disabled. What does this mean? It means that in an accommodating environment, Persons with an impairment, with a condition, are still able to participate fully in society because the society is able to accommodate their needs. And these apply to persons with disabilities of all ages. So the focus is no longer on the individual. The focus is on the society. Because any individual, any child in an accommodating environment is able to go to school. Let's take the, the example of a child using a wheelchair. In a school environment that has ramps, that has spaces that are designed to allow for children with a wheelchair to move around, this child can attend school. He can enjoy recreational spaces within the school context. And he can fully participate on equal basis with other children. The same school without a ramp become a barrier for a child. He will not be able to access the buildings. He will not be able to get an education. And later on in life, he will not be able to have a productive job. So all these different concepts and definitions of disability have been reflected in data collection instruments. And I want to give you a few examples. Let's look at the example coming from the United States of America. This is the population and housing census that was implemented in 1850. This is the way in which questions where disability were adopted in the census. The census asked the household head whether any member of the household was deaf or dumb, blind, insane, idiotic, a pauper or a convict. As you can see, there was a very offensive language that was used to identify within a household 
persons with disabilities. And the definition of disabilities was limited to those who were deaf or dumb, blind, insane, idiotic, a pauper, or a convict. But some people might say, this is back in time. This was 1850 in the United States. Let's look at another example coming from the census that was implemented in Ireland in 1901. This is the question that was used in the census to identify persons with disabilities. The question was addressed to the household head or the respondent to the census and inquired whether he or she, meaning the members of the household, was a deaf, dumb, blind, idiotic, an imbecile or lunatic. Again, you can see how offensive the language was and also how narrow the definition of disability was in the census used in Ireland. Let's now take a more recent example from Pakistan. Again, this was the population and housing census that was implemented in Pakistan in 1998. This is how the question reads. God forbid, is there any disabled person in the household? And if so, which is the nature of the disability? And the response categories that are offered to respondents are the following. Blind, deaf or dumb, physically handicapped, mentally retarded, multiple disabled, insane, or others. There are many different problems with these questions. In addition to using, again, a very offensive language and a very narrow definition of disability, the problem with this question is that the definition of disability of physically handicapped, mentally retarded, or multiple disabled is left to the respondent. We don't know what the respondent is saying yes to because we don't define disability. We use generic and stigmatizing terms to ask respondent whether or not there is a member of the household with these characteristics. I would like now to share another example, a more recent example from the census that was conducted in Montenegro in 2011. The question reads, does the person have any disability that prevents him or her from performing everyday activity due to long lasting illness, invalidity, or old age. And this question is meant to be applicable to all household members age zero and above. But as you can see, how can you think children can be captured by a question that focus on difficulties in performing everyday activities due to long lasting illness, invalidity, or old age? I would like to take a moment to reflect on the special case of children in data collection related to disability. UNICEF has reviewed over 800 data sources that have been used to collect data on persons with disabilities. We look at different censuses, surveys that have been designed and implemented to gather data on persons with disabilities. And we realize that in all these different data collection efforts, children's children have been overlooked. There are uh, different ways in which information on children with disabilities have been collected, but unfortunately, in most cases, the same questionnaire used for adults has been also used to identify children with disabilities. We know that children are a particularly challenging population uh, to collect data on, particularly when it comes to their development and possibly their disability status. Why? Because children are constantly in a state of development. They constantly change. So it's very difficult to distinguish what can be a, a, simply, a simply different pace of development from uh, delays in uh, what is expected to be normal development. What is also challenging in the case of children is the fact that information on children are gathered through a proxy respondent. In most cases, mothers or primary caregivers or children. When mothers and primary caregivers provide information on children, they bring a lot. They bring emotions. 
they bring knowledge of child development. They bring expectations. And this knowledge, these expectations, these emotions are also very different from one culture to the next. All these elements need to be taken into consideration when designing a questionnaire on children with disabilities. Because the way in which we collect data, the way in which we formulate the question has enormous impact on the results that you can get. The way in which you ask whether or not the person or the child has a disability can result in very different prevalence levels, meaning on very different numbers related to the percentage of the population with a disability. And I would like to provide a specific example. Let's look at the data coming from Uganda. As you can see in this slide, we have four different data points. For the same countries, all these data have been collected between 1991 and 2006, using very different questions to gather information on persons with disability. In 1991, a census was implemented in the country. One question was included to identify persons with disabilities. The questions read, is anyone in this household disabled? And the response option is yes or no. The definition of disability is left to the respondent. He's the one in charge of deciding whether or not the member of his or her household have a disability. This questionnaire produced a disability prevalence of 1%. In 2002, another census was implemented in the country. The question used in the census was, does anyone have any difficulty in moving, seeing, hearing, speaking, or learning, which has lasted or is expected to last six months or more? So as you can see, the concept of disability has been unpacked in this question and present different domains and specify that these difficulties have lasted or is expected to last at least six months or more. This question produced a disability prevalence of 4%. In 2006, a household survey was implemented in the country. The questionnaire used to identify persons with disability was the follow. Does the person have any difficulty in moving, seeing, hearing, speaking or learning, which has lasted or is expected to last six months or more? The same question used in the 2002 census. But in this case, it was a survey, and questions were asked about every single member of the household. The disability prevalence that was produced was 7%. In the same year, another survey inquire about persons with disabilities using the six questions developed by the Washington Group on Disability Statistics. It was exactly the same year, 2006. A different questionnaire was used and 20% was the prevalence that was obtained by using this much more comprehensive way of defining disability. So as you can see, the scope of the problem, the size of your population, is importantly affected by the way in which you collect data on uh, disability. What's behind this wide range in disability prevalence is the way in which questions have been asked. Imagine how confusing this can be for policymakers. It is therefore very important when we read data on disability, when we try to make sense of the available estimate, it is crucial to understand the way in which disability has been defined and the language that has been used to collect the data. To sum up my presentation, I would like to highlight three main points. First, data on persons with disability have been collected for the last two centuries. And all countries in the world, at some point, have had the preoccupation of gathering information on persons with disabilities. My second point is that the way in which we define disability and the way in which we collected information on persons with disability has evolved over time. We went from a very medical model of disability, a very narrow definition of disability, 
focusing on conditions and impairments to a much broader way of thinking about disability and a different way of collecting data on persons with disabilities. The last point I would like to make is that thanks to the adoption of the International Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, we now have a new and much broader definition. And this definition has been used to develop new data collection instruments. UNICEF and Washington Group have developed new questionnaires that are consistent with the definition embedded in the CRPD and avoid all the stigmatizing languages that has been used in the past. These modules will be presented in the next videos. Thank you.